I think the most important consequence of having definitions and classifications is that they help structure your thoughts if you're dealing with a patient. I mean, there's so many disorders in which consciousness can be lost that it can be frightening. So you need something to structure your ideas. And what the EEC guidelines have done since the very beginning, and which is being strengthened in the last version, is that they work with the concept of transient loss of consciousness. And this is a scheme which was um, defined for the express purpose of organizing thoughts and bundling a few disorders together that look like one another, while also excluding everything but that doesn't really look like syncope. They state, uh, in a very long sentence, mind you, which might be look confusing at first, which things you should look out for. For instance, we are always dealing with patients with syncope for who have already fainted, so you're looking at something that happened in the past. You're not there to check them out or to do a quick neurological investigation. So all the information that is available resides in the memory of the patient or an eyewitness, and it's your job to extract it. So what we're trying to teach people is what to look for. It's quite easy, by the way. Everyone already understands it, but it does help to point it out. One, amnesia. People have a gap in their memory, which you can check. What were you doing at the time? Next thing, I found myself lying on the floor. Gap in memory. Second, um, they will have a... Uh, if there is an eyewitness about, the eyewitness will say they didn't do anything. They did not respond. I spoke to them, they didn't answer. Uh, and if I, I, I took their arm and, and moved it about a bit, they don't respond at all. Third thing, they lose motor control. As we are standing here, we have motor control, which basically amounts to you keep on standing while we're talking. So if you've got the, these three things, amnesia, no responsiveness, and loss of motor control, meaning falling, you can very easily check whether this patient falls in the category of transit loss of consciousness, adding a short duration. If you've done that, and all these elements are there, then you know you're either dealing with syncope, tonic-clonic seizures or psychogenic spells. And the next job is obviously to go down the list and try to find your, di your specific diagnosis. I think a lot, if you look at many textbooks concerning disorders of loss of consciousness, you would have a list as long as your arm. And that list would contain disorders like hypoglycemia, and you can lose consciousness for at least half an hour. So they should never belong in the same list as, say, asystolic cardio inhibitory vasovagal syncope or a Brugada syncope or a syncope due to aortic stenosis. We have to bundle disorders together that actually look like one another and that cause the confusion to reduce the confusion. That's what it's all about.